Hi guys, how you doing? Uh, happy Friday before reading week. Uh, unfortunately, I can't be there with you today. I apologize um, out of my control, but uh, we will reconvene after the reading week on the first Friday back. Uh, and that lecture will be on the Kennedy class four, which will embark on project number five and six. So hopefully your exam went smooth and easy and straightforward. And I'm just going to take a little time up here to finish off uh, page seven, uh, which I know we started with this one last week, but I'm going to repeat it here. Um, but before I get started, I want to wish you guys, well, hopefully uh, kind of belated luck on the exam. Hopefully you didn't find it too onerous and hopefully you managed well. Um, but you will get a second try if you didn't, so don't be discouraged. That'll be on week 15. It will be more of the same. Um, but I'm going to hopefully you'll get a, a much needed uh, rest and relaxation this week and stay safe um, wherever you may be. Um, drawing number 19, we touched on briefly last week. And the first thing I'm going to do uh, when I'm designing any cast partial denture design is to outline the edentulous areas first. Now on a lower, that external finishing line comes straight down from the guide plane and straight down. And then we're going to have mesh retention adhere the denture-based plastic to the partial denture frame with a couple of tissue stops. Uh, this particular prescription is asking for some horizontal shoe extensions, which we can do in these kind of metal tissue stops adjacent to the uh, guide plane. What does a horizontal shoe extension do? Um, these days, 2021, it maintains the length and integrity of the guide plane. Back in 1960s, it would compensate for the shrinkage of acrylic as metal was more of a um, uh, more accurate material uh, that would be adjacent to the CEJ, as well as less free monomers in this area as well. So this is the classic RPI design that you're going to see in most textbooks, whether it's a uh, Stewart's Prosthodontics or Davenport's textbook or Mosby's uh, partial denture design even the uh, U.S. Air Force. And the mesolocusal rest is the R on the terminal abutment of 3, 4, and 4, 4, which is adjacent to the edentulous area, which is um, all the time the abutment tooth adjacent to the posterior edentulous area. Um, and the eye bar could be mesial, mid, or distal buckle. Downside to distal buckle is that we may have some more distal drift of the appliance if these rests are uh, uh, not deep enough. But with the class one partial denture, the rest should be round and shallow based. So we'll just say mid buckle four three four. Entering the carriage or the free end carriage or denture base carriage or mesh lattice retention, whichever term you want to use, Roughly about one prosthetic tooth uh, distal of that. And the reason I say that is because you have to envision the prosthetic five, the prosthetic six, which I'm superimposing on top of my free end. This finishes roughly, dis roughly distal of six. The eye bar enters between the embrasure or interproximal or interdental papilla area of five and six. So if you put it midpoint, it'll be less flexible, plus prosthetically the five will look really unesthetic. And then I'm going to superimpose five, six, seven. I'm even superimposing the whole denture base on top because this is what you must visualize when you're designing the partial denture. Last but not least is the major connector, which is a lingual bar, which is three to five millimeters below the gingival margins. And then as students, I ask you to shade it in. In uh, private practice, you may not shade the uh, major connector in, 
but this tells me that this is a solid piece of metal and there, where it's not shaded is a window. So you can see south of the three, four and four, four is a open window, three, possibly four to five millimeters below the free gingival margin of three, four and four, four. So this is our classic RPI design. This is the classic RPI design that doesn't require a reciprocal arm. It has three point contact, the proximal plate, which is the guide plane, the rest and the eye bar. And if you can see that this kind of triangular eyes or three point contact of the tooth, and this here will stabilize the tooth acting in reciprocation in itself. Now we know from studying class one that there is a fulcrum line of this imaginary line drawn through the two most terminal uh, rests or two most distal rests. There's a rotation around this fulcrum line, which is going to require us some indirect retention. If we choose to have some indirect retention, the, as a minimum, if this design should incorporate a single rest, as a minimum. If we wanted to do more, we could go with the Kennedy bar or the double lingual bar or the superior bar on the cingulums of 3-3 three, three to 4-3 collectively. If we wanted even more, we could even plate this whole area with a lingual aproning. Um, I think that's the only considerations of this drawing. I know this is a repeat from the last end of last class because I squeezed in an extra drawing. But just in case we weren't following along uh, or we missed, um, there's the review of the class one RPI lower. Now, I know you had an exam and I know you're probably inundated with uh, information and studying and you want to get to work. So I'll be brief for the next two drawings number 20 and 21. Uh, this is a maxillary, even though these teeth look like lowers. So some dental grams, I put this in here, doesn't always look like maxillary teeth, but you can see the tooth numbers missing here on the left exemplify maxillary teeth. So I'm going to outline the dentulous area first. And this is collectively again from four, five, six on both sides. And we're going to have mesh retention attaching this acrylic denture base of six prosthetic teeth to the major connector. Cingulum rest on one, three. Cingulum rest on two, three. Your drawings in the future will be very clear. Everyone should be getting very close to 100%, if not all of us, 100% if we practice diligently and, and maybe a few hairs we need to clean up on. Mesioclusal rest, ring clasp on the sevens engaging the mesial lingual undercut. So identify mesial lingual and then we'll bring the red arm as the... Now don't connect it if you notice, I left a space here. It's very important. Otherwise, I won't know which way the ring clasp comes from, the buckle or the lingual. And if you're a little bit sloppy, put an X. So I know where the retentive arm ends. Half Y clasp. I didn't say which way, but generally speaking, towards the distal for aesthetic reasons and into the carriage, one prosthetic tooth spacing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I said distal labial undercut, didn't I? And the last but not least, horseshoe major connector. Around on top of the largest rugae, around the incisive papilla, over top of the largest rugae, which you know is going to be distal of Canines for model analysis of your full denture class. And then a horseshoe major connector. If you're having a hard time with symmetry, draw an imaginary line down the midline suture. And then we can have some mirror imaging and then shade in my major connector lightly to show me what is a solid major connector or solid chromium cobalt.
Uh, Saturday, um, if you are inclined, with well, the Chicago Midwinter Meeting is usually this weekend in Chicago. I think it is for Americans. We're unable to travel. And LMT Lab Day was canceled. Goes to show you how many Canadians support that event. But the dental section of the Chicago Midwinter Meeting is still on. You can sign up. It's for free as a technician. And then take in some virtual uh, trade booths or um, uh, some free lectures, seminars, information. Have a look. Chicago Midwinter Meeting. Um, unfortunately, I'm not there to answer any questions. So I'm going to lean on uh, uh, Carrie Musa Matina, who I believe are in the classroom. Possibly they can answer some questions if you have any from 19 or 20. I'm sure at this point you're probably sick of the drawings and want to finish your work. I'm not there to do the laser welding. Uh, I'll lean on Musa. Uh, he can take you one by one and do a laser welding exercise. If you finished project three and you want to finish project four, we'll have the remaining seven weeks for projects five and six. Uh, we will be starting projects five and six together week eight. So be prepared with those models. This is the class four upper, uh, I believe class two mod one lower. So be ready with those. We're going to survey, design, block out, uh, take some small groups upstairs in between those sessions to start the CAD design of the lower, uh, which should be exciting. First time at George Brown and you are it. So uh, we'll see how it goes. There'll be some bumps and some frustrations, but embrace it. Well, that's kind of normal. Even with much experience, you'll find that during the uh, digital implementation of anything. Um, the last one here is introducing a new topic. I have a sample in the blue bin in the back of 508 of a case with three of them. But we're going to do a post-retention for the uh, 1.6 molar. This is a metal denture base, which we've been practicing. But I want to introduce now, on Project uh, Drawing 21, is the metal lingual backing, which is basically like a three-quarter crown. And this is a metal lingual backing. And then there is a post loop in the anterior. And this is usually designed for uh, overclosure or uh, at least 50 to 100% overbite in the anterior section where there's not much room uh, vertically between the lower uh, three three or three two and the maxillary two three there's not much room vertically so we're going to have a metal stop especially when it's canine guided occlusion we would prefer to have this metal backing to guide the excursion to disclude all the posterior tooth uh, excuse me disclude all the posterior teeth if we are resting on a, a bit of acrylic or an acrylic tooth on one post to disclude all the occlusion in the posterior, chances are we're gonna have fracture. So we'll have the lingual of this in a metal occlusion with a little loop and some beads and maybe Carrie uh, or Musa or Martina can show you a framework that I finished off. There's three uh, high linguals. Also, it's a good example of what polishing uh, should be a standard of for the cases that you'll be handing in. If it doesn't look like that, then you should polish yours a little bit more. Mesioclusal rest 1-7. Distal occlusal rest. Well, I must have a mistake here, no? DO 1-5, no, I've got it. And 2-5. And meso equals arrest to four. Distal lingual rest to two. Acres clasp one seven one five. Embrasure clasp follow along slowly here because this was a little tricky, I think. 
Because there's only two teeth missing. And we've got a lot of hardware. And now we've got to connect these dots. We're replacing this with a metal backing. We've got this as a uh, metal denture base. And now we need to start three to five millimeters below. Remember, cross the midline at 90 degrees. This should be at 90 degrees. And this one here, we have some options. We can come down here and go up this way. Or we could go this way. Or we could come inside here. Regardless of how much palatal coverage we wish, I'll do the one in the middle. It's imperative now that we remember that we cross at 90 degrees. And the width of this doesn't need to be that big because we're only replacing one molar. And then shade this, maybe not as high and dark as the high lingual. And hopefully you can visualize this after I show you the sample of metal backing. So, so far we've got the mesh retention, the post retention, and now the metal backing. And we could also have metal occlusion in the back posterior section with acrylic facings. And now we're, you know, it's week eight, if not week 24, excuse me, week 21. And we're taking our partial denture um, knowledge to the next step now. So uh, it's only been 17, 18, 19 minutes. I think I want to stop there because you've had enough with the exam. But I want to finish off page seven. And once again, I apologize, I can't be there. But I uh, rest assured and promise I'll be back uh, for week number nine. Enjoy your week off. Stay safe. Take care.